Yeah, it's an American paper which has been going three years in the States. And a few copies used to filter into Australia and a few were distributed here and uh, then the customs here clamped down on it because of the language. And uh, now we're bringing it out completely ready to print from America and printing it here. And the only thing we do is change the advertisements to local ads. Have you had any censorship problems at all? I mean, had censorship laws must have relaxed within the three years if you're able to publish it here now. Yeah, well, we're assuming they have. I mean, the censorship in this country has absolutely no guidelines, so all you can do is guess. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I don't agree with any form of censorship, so um, we're just proceeding. And if anybody objects, they they can object. It is a very radical newspaper. Does it have any prime editorial policy? It's not really a very radical newspaper. It's radical in terms of the Australian press and mm. what we're used to. Um, but there are much more radical papers, say, on specific areas that Rolling Stone touches on, like politics. There are obviously far more radical coverage of politics, both here and in America. And sex, or well, Rolling Stone very rarely um, covers uh, explicitly sexual matters. I mean, if, the, if sex comes into some story, then they don't ever cut it out. Um, but there are far more radical papers pushing the sexual liberation, both in America and here. Uh, if it does specialise on rock music, and in that sense it's still, and always has been, a rock and roll paper. Uh, but it, as I say, it covers all these other fields, and in that sense, it's it's radical because it covers things that nobody else would talk about. That's all. Okay, so the Stone covers sort of um, rock music and politics within the states in England. Are you going to have an Australian section? Yes, um, we'll have two ways of getting Australian news and features into into Rolling Stone. One will be things that we submit for usage in the uh, international pages mm. and anything that we send for that if it's accepted will give Australian coverage all over the world and then we'll have a section of probably a page only on Australian news for the Australian issue only and that will cover um, a very brief summary of, of the events that again nobody else here is going to cover. I believe you had some hassles in putting out your first publication. Yeah, first edition. Well, We've been sort of talking about this bringing out Rolling Stone for months and we talked to, to Southbound Press in Melbourne about printing it and distributing it because they can offer the two in one, which is very convenient. And they were very happy with it and they got estimates of how many they'd sell and so on. And they printed the first issue, 20,000 copies of it, and were all ready to distribute it when their managing director read it and said, no, you know, we can't we can't send this out, it's got too much emphasis on drugs or it was never made very clear what it was that he didn't like about it. I think it was just one of those not our image things. You would have thought they'd have thought of that before they printed 20,000 copies. However, they, that was their problem. We said, well, in that case, uh, you've got 20,000 copies, you'll, uh, you'll just have to pulp them because they had their name on them, so mm. we can't go out. So in one day we had to find another printer and alternative national distribution. Well, we did. We found a printer in the same uh, in Melbourne, which was convenient for us at the time. And uh, distribution, we've we've found people in each state who are small, relatively independent distributors who are prepared to handle it. And I think this is a very healthy sign because now we we're getting to the point where these distributors in each state of Australia. They've got something in Rolling Stone that can make them a little bit of money, give them a base, and hopefully it will be within six months we'll have in Australia and a distribution system nationwide that is prepared to take radical papers on, and that, that would be unique in the world pretty well. So I think in, in, in the long run it's obviously a, a great thing that Southdown pulled out. But of how objective can you remain as an editor and not just push your own personal values? Well, with Rolling Stone I don't get a chance because it's all put together overseas, except for this one page we hope to do. Um, uh, I think there are other ways in Australia, obviously other magazines, local magazines, have got to cover the same sort of material here. And I've been trying to do this with a number of magazines. We had Revolution magazine, which also ran foul of 
this case it was not the printers or the censors, it was news agents in several states. So we changed that to High Times magazine, which has run through the same problems. And now there are a lot of new magazines being talked about by different people. The way that these things are going to survive is uh, through imposing a, a pretty tough line on, on the business side, which means not, as I say, the editorial approach does not look to defining a market area and then making money out of that market area. You start out with your ideas, you put them into a magazine in America, it's Rolling Stone here, I'm not sure what's going to come next, but something will be coming out pretty soon, mm -hmm. and that will be run on highly efficient level, business-wise, which is, to my mind, just a procedural problem which you have to have completely solved before you, you can survive. And um, this is what Rolling Stone has done. They've been accused of you know, being capitalist sellout, but um, all they do is they uh, <coughs> make sure that they survive one week to the next by having a simple, strict line on their business dealings. And uh, as far as the, uh, the, the straight capitalist press goes in their relationship with these sort of magazines, they're like Southbound Press, they're running scared. They don't know how to handle this sort of approach to newspapers and that's their problem. I think in that sense I don't really care about them because I think they'll fade away in time with that attitude.